Isaiah has this glorious, in some ways, amazing image, however, of when the king falls into Sheol, into the pit, into hell itself. And as he's plummeting down to the lowest depths of the uh, pit, there before him are all the various kings of the nations who are observing his fall. And they say, what? You too have become as weak as us. You who once destroyed the nations and ruled the earth, even you have come down here. It's almost something of an amazement. Perhaps a greedy anticipation. <laughs> now we've got you. Now we can return the favor here. He's come this far now that even the graves rise up to meet him and welcome him to the pit. You know, when you look at the mighty of the earth, and see them in the time when they fall. When you observe certain folks who have passed on, and perhaps have an opportunity to walk past their, 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 their casket in a funeral service. You might have known this individual as the head of a company or a community leader, but when you walk by and see the remains in that casket, you wonder to yourself, this is just a shadow of the man I once knew. This is just a pale reflection of the woman I once knew. In death, they're so weak, they seem so, they seem so small. I wonder if, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I wonder if photos of Michael Jackson will appear before long of him after death stripped of all his glory, just the man himself as he was. See, sometimes we seem big and large in life, but really we're not so big. Our humanity is not so great. There's no room for pride here, no room for arrogance. We are all going to the grave. Even the most mighty and powerful on earth need to be cautioned that one day they too will be trampled underfoot, will be put aside under the grave, into the ground. And here Isaiah says, the body of this king will not again be ennobled with a wonderful grave or a mausoleum built in his honor, but rather his body will be so despised that he will be cast out into the field along with the bodies of his fallen soldiers and they will just be piled up like so much refuse. Then, as a mattress salesman, I really appreciate this. Your bed will be maggots and your coverings will be worms. Not a pretty picture. Not a comfortable resting place for eternity. This is the end of the era who set themselves up to advance and to be like God. It will not be. It will not be. How far this king of Babylon is from the Lord of glory himself. The king of Babylon would exalt himself and rise up into the heavens all on his own. But the Lord of glory would lay aside his rightful glory in the heavens and come down to this earth, taking on our humanity and going to the cross to die for us. It's going in the entire opposite direction. Not from earth to heaven, but from heaven and His rightful glory to earth. And even to the cross, a place of shame. So that He might rescue His people. The Lord Jesus Christ is entirely opposed to this Antichrist. He is the exact opposite. And his death on the cross is the laying of his own life for you and I, so that we would be exalted and lifted up. You see, whereas the Antichrist, this king of Babylon, 
this great one who is filled with pride, this one tries to destroy others to assert himself. He puts many in bondage. But Jesus gives of himself to liberate us from our oppression and bondage to sin and brings us life everlasting. You see, he is so much different, so much greater than that fallen king. And so worthy is the Lord Jesus Christ to ascend into the heavens, to sit at the Father's right hand, to rule over the heavens and the earth, because he is no usurper. He is the rightful Son. To him belongs the glory and the praise, dominion and power forever and ever. And in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, among those whom he has redeemed, there is no place for pride. There is no place within our hearts for that kind of arrogance. Our election to grace is not a cause for pride or sense that we are special in some ways in and of ourselves. It is, after all, by grace that we are saved. And our redemption, our hope of glory, is all of grace. All of God's benefits to us. And not because of our worth or self-assertion. We're saved by grace. And so within the church, there's no place for pride. That's especially true of pastors, elders, deacons who serve in the church in office. Though they have authority within the church, there's no place for pride within that position. They should be like their Lord who was the good shepherd who laid down his life for others, for his sheep. That's our calling, to put aside ourselves and to minister to those among us. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ should take up the same mindset. That's Paul's words in Philippians 2. Have this mind in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very form of God, emptied himself. You see, that is the quality of heart that we should all pursue. Humility. So that we might stand before the Lord and rejoice and know that his word is true. Blessed are the poor in the spirit. For theirs is the kingdom. thank you for your mercies to us, O Lord, and we acknowledge that apart from your grace, we should go to the pit for our sins. But you, in your mercy and your love, uh, redeemed us from sin, delivered us from death, brought us into your very family, made us the children of God, placed your spirit within us, and made us new and alive in Christ. One day we look forward to the time when we will be raised from this life, brought into your everlasting courts where we might worship the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Keep us till then, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.